Welcome to Request Donated Tech through TechSoup. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup. I run the majority of our events here, uh, online events at least, and I've been with the organization for seven years. Prior to that, worked with three small nonprofits as a recipient of TechSoup's donation programs. And those were based in Washington, D.C. and Oakland, California where I currently live. And so I come to this position having a lot of experience being where you are, where I was hoping to get the least expensive, best options of technology and software and hardware for my small nonprofit without having an IT staff to help me do it. And I uh, have gone through the process myself a number of times. And now here at TechSoup for the past seven years, I uh, have spent a lot of time trying to help you, our audience, and our, our, the folks we serve at nonprofits and libraries and churches around the country and world access our donation programs and learn the best options that suit your organization's needs. So I'm happy to be your host today. You'll also see on the back end Ali Bezdikian who is an interactive events and video producer here at TechSoup. She'll be helping me throughout the webinar, flagging your questions and highlighting those while I'm doing some live screen sharing so that we get them all answered today so this event can be the most useful to you as we can make it. We are both located in TechSoup's San Francisco headquarters. Go ahead and chat in to let us know where you're joining from today. And I have on the map where I'd like to be in the Bahamas on vacation instead. But since I'm not, I'm happy to be here as your host, and I'm glad to have lots of you joining us. We have some folks joining us from La Ceiba, Honduras. That's where my husband is from. Wisconsin, Connecticut, New York, Mississippi, Virginia, Kentucky, Texas, Minneapolis, Kansas City, Indiana, Florida, Tanzania, Traverse City, Michigan, Chicago, Washington, all over the place. We're glad to have you all with us. Looking at our agenda, we will do some poll questions. And really the rest of this agenda is going to be based on what you really want to cover. So these are some topics we could cover, but really your votes in just a moment on a couple of live poll questions will help dictate how we spend our time today so that you get the most out of this event. TechSoup, as a quick introduction for those of you who are maybe not familiar with us, we are a partner network of NGOs. We're nonprofit too, located here in the U.S. but also in 63 other countries around the world, serving 121 countries with donation programs, technology knowledge, and resources that we try to share out to the network to help strengthen your capacity to serve your mission. You can learn about what we do in our 2014 Year in Review. These links in the slide deck are not clickable on screen, but they are in the deck that you will receive or that you received with a reminder. We uh, have grown a lot in the past few years, and I'm proud to be part of that. Um, so you can see some of the accomplishments that we've made in that Year in Review. You can also see on this map the dots in countries where we are active around the world. These little green dots are net squared local groups where you can find a local meetup to help you intersect with NP Tech experts and consultants who have technology expertise who want to do something for the social good. So if there's a dot on the map near you, that's where we have local meetups around the world. If there's an orange dot, that's where you'll find our partners running similar donation programs. And some of those serve regions, not just countries. So if you're joining us from outside the U.S., you want to check out our TechSoupGlobal.org website because that's where you'll find out if we have a partner serving technology donations in your area. We have served more than 615,000 NGOs worldwide to the tune of nearly $5 billion. That's B with a billion with a B in technology products and grants to NGOs, libraries, and the social sector. And you'll learn more about it when we get onto our website in a moment. This is TechSoup.org, which some of you may already be familiar with. And your input now in these poll questions will help guide us as to what we cover. So again, I want to make this the most useful as it can be for you. So feel free to click on any of these radio buttons on your screen. You can select as many as you'd like in whatever order you like to let us know how you would like to spend this hour. Are you brand new to TechSoup and you'd really like to walk through the process of registering and joining? Maybe you're already registered with TechSoup, your organization is, and you want to talk about eligibility and restrictions for different programs. Maybe you want to have a better understanding of our admin fees. Or you'd like to spend some time looking at the kinds of hardware donation programs that are available. Or you want to know about specific software donation programs. And if there are specific programs you want to learn about, go ahead and chat those in. We have a lot of different ones. 
some are very popular names that you're familiar with, and others may be a little bit more obscure, and I'm happy to explain as many as I can during today's webinar. Do you want to learn about the learning and community resources like our articles and our blog posts and our newsletters? Do you want to learn about those meetups and talk more about how to access experts? You want to see more about our webinars and trainings and other events coming up? You want to learn about navigating TechSoup and how to make your way around. And if there's something I haven't mentioned, go ahead and list it in the chat. We have a couple of people chiming in, Microsoft Products and McAfee. We have another person mentioning Constant Contact, another person men mentioning CRM software. So just to address a couple of those while the rest of you are still voting, we can certainly touch on Microsoft Products. We don't actually have donations of McAfee products in our catalog. We have uh, for security and privacy and virus protection, we have Symantec products, and we also have um, Bitdefender products. So those are a couple in our catalog that address security, but we don't actually have McAfee. And Lewis asked about Constant Contact. We don't have Constant Contact. That's a donor that's not in our catalog, but I'm happy to talk about my experience using them. But there are other email blast tools in our system as well. So thanks for those of you who are chiming in. Uh, other folks are asking about Office 365. Somebody is asking about payroll on QuickBooks, meetups and fundraising, QuickBooks, Mac apps. So lots of great contributions in the chat coming in. You can keep those coming because we will be uh, referring to those and referring to the chat and what you would want to cover while we do this webinar. I'm going to go ahead and show the full results. And it looks like the great majority of you want to spend time on software donations up front. And again, if you have specific programs in mind or types of programs, go ahead and mention those. And let's see, hardware donation programs are number two on the list. So I will show some of the hardware options on our programs. Let's see, what's number three? Eligibility and restrictions. Just taking notes here so I make sure I cover the things in the right order followed by a uh, let's see, admin fees and webinars and trainings I believe are next. All right. Thank you all for taking the time to vote on that. And I will go ahead and we'll try and make it through as much as we can today. And for the categories that didn't have as many votes, we'll probably do a little bit of that too. But I want to have a couple of more questions that you answer for me. This again helps me. We did ask this upon registration, but the folks who register aren't always the people that come. So we want to know, are you already registered with TechSoup? Because this will help me know whether I need to spend time doing some of that front end joining and registering. It looked like from the poll that was asked, on getting started with joining and registering. It was only about 14% of people that were interested in that. Peter asks, I want to represent TechSoup outside the USA. So meaning you have an organization maybe outside the US that you want to have donations for, or they're headquartered outside the US. Go ahead and clarify in the chat and we can try and answer that question for you. I'll give just a couple more seconds on this question and then skip to the results. It looks like 60% of you are already registered, and about 21%, 22% are not sure, and another 18% are not. So that's helpful to know for the 40% of you who are either not sure or not registered. I can really quickly just show where to do that or where to check if you're not sure. And um, I'll do that once I start live screen sharing. I'll spend just a moment on it so you can get started after this. And then one last question. For those of you that are registered, have you personally requested donations on behalf of your organization before, or on behalf of an organization even if it's not your current organization? Uh, let me know because that again helps me know how much you know about TechSoup already so that we don't waste our time on things that you don't really want to cover. And I'll give a few more seconds so everyone can participate. So for those of you who are not in the U.S., I mentioned earlier uh, as we were just beginning, uh, we have a couple of people who have mentioned that they are in Ghana or Tanzania uh, or Honduras. If you are not in the U.S. today, um, most of the donation programs we will be covering are U.S.-based programs. Some of them are universal. So for example, Office 365, you can access that in nearly every country on the planet as a donation. 
Um, if you are in a country that is served by one of our regional partners, then you can find that partner on TechSoupGlobal.org. So it's a little bit of a different website you can go to, and you can get to that, that partner organization and try to register and request donations through them. If you don't have a U.S.-based office, uh, many of you will want to go to a partner elsewhere, uh, including Canada. A lot of the same donation programs are available to our Canadian partners and organizations, but many are not. So 70% of you have not requested donations. So we'll probably walk through a little bit of that process as well. So now what I'm going to do is go into sharing my screen. Keep in mind once I do that, I won't actually be able to see your chat questions, but Ali will be seeing them on the back end. And you'll be able to see everything on my screen, my screen, and which I'm actually I have TechSoup Global up right now. Let me know if you aren't able to see or can't keep up with me because uh, the screen isn't loading for you, and Ali will flag me to go slower. This is the TechSoup Global website, and I just wanted to point this out for folks who are not in the U.S. You can click on the link to our global network, and over here you'll see. We have a long list of partner countries uh, that are served or serving areas of the world. And so for example, um, you, if you're in Asia, you may not see your specific country, but we have uh, in Hong Kong and Japan, we have partners that actually serve many parts of Asia. Um, so keep that in mind that you can go to those sites and access many donations for different countries across Asia like Thailand and Vietnam and other places. So I'm going to go ahead and jump us over to TechSoup.org, which is the U.S.-based program and uh, flagship site of the TechSoup network. And you'll see we are on the home page right here. You'll see that we have a few features up top that we like to promote, and these change out every week. You'll see today's webinar is one of these tabs. Um, just some quick navigation across the top. Right up here in the upper left, this is where you subscribe to our newsletters. If you are patiently waiting on a product to become available, for, for example, somebody mentioned QuickBooks, and maybe you are waiting for QuickBooks 2016 to come out before you request another version of it. Our newsletters are the quickest way to get updated when there are new products added. So there is Buy the Cup which is a weekly newsletter, New Product Alert which comes out twice a month, and this one is specifically targeting any new released products. So when we got Windows 10, when we get Office uh, 2016, when QuickBooks 2016 or QuickBooks Online or QuickBooks Payroll, when any of those products are released, this is where you'll find out about them. You'll also find them in Buy the Cup too, but the new product alert is just about new products. And if you're joining us from a library, we have a newsletter that's specifically for you that comes out once a month. We don't spam people. Um, and this is a great way to just keep abreast of topics that are specifically for your sector. So upper left hand side for that, you can find us on all of our social channels up here. And you can also select from the drop down up here what country you are in. It defaults to the United States since that's what the TechSoup.org website primarily targets. But you can again select from the big long drop down of countries where we have a presence and find your partner there. Now up here I'm already logged in to our site, and I can click to log out just to show you what it looks like. It looks pretty much the same except you don't see my organization name and my email address up here. If you are not yet a member, clicking this Join button up here in the upper left – or I'm sorry, upper right – is a great way to start. It takes you through the steps. When you go to Join, you want to make sure that you've got your organization's name, mailing address, an email address, maybe not your personal Jane at email address. You might want to use an admin at or an info at or something that multiple people receive so that you don't lose those emails over time. And you want to have either your EIN number which is your employer ID number, or if you are a library, you want to make sure that you are listed in the IMLS database. And so you want to have those numbers at your fingertips when you go through this process. If you don't, you can always save your spot for later. You can start the process and then save the screen and come back to it at a later point. But it's good to have it because you can check to see if your organization may already be registered. We find that people often don't realize until they are in the process that, oops, I've registered my org again. 
and I didn't mean to, I didn't know we were in here, that a board member or a, a prior staff person registered your org. Um, so it's a good way to check is by having that available to you. Um, if you are already a member, you can log in here with that member login. And you can log in as an individual. So you'll, you'll see when I was logged in it said bwegand at TechSoup.org. So that's my personal email address. And my email address is affiliated or associated with the organizations for which I can request donations. Now the accounts I have set up in here are test accounts now because I don't request donations on behalf of my former organizations any longer. But you can request donations for multiple orgs. So if you are on a board and you volunteer and on staff at different nonprofits or libraries or friends of libraries or churches, you can request donations on behalf of any of them as long as you have permission to associate yourself with that account. Um, so before you go through that process though, and even if you are already in the system, it's a, a great way to know what your organization is eligible for is to check your eligibility. And so I'm just showing this quickly as a navigational point that you can take this little quiz to say I'm a C3 nonprofit, I'm a C3 public library or like a Friends of a Library program, or I'm a non-501c3 public library. And for example, if you're a church, you're most likely a 501c3 nonprofit. And you can select your state. I think most of my test orgs are in Michigan, which is where I'm originally from. I can select my organization type and subtype. And these types and subtypes are not made up by us. These are the IRS's NTEE codes. So these are the terms that the IRS uses to determine what type of organization you are. And so I can say that I'm an inner city or community activity organization. And then this subtype will automatically update to the type of organization I am. And I'll say I'm a community service organization. Now keep in mind the types and subtypes you select when you actually go to register determine your eligibility. So talking about eligibility and restrictions which was on our list of top topics to cover. When you go through to register your org, for those of you, the 20 some percent that were not already registered, based on your org type and subtype, that's what determines which programs you're eligible to receive donations from. And those restrictions are set by our donor partners. So for example, uh, maybe for those of you who are already registered in our system, maybe in the past you were not or eligible for Adobe donations because they uh, restricted to only donating to youth service organizations, uh, domestic violence shelters, animal rights organizations, or whatever it might be. Those are examples. That's not actually the restrictions they had. But that company who donates can determine what types of organizations they want to donate to. Just like with any in-kind donation or grant program, they get to set those stipulations. And TechSoup, as the trusted entity that is beholden to uh, determine eligibility, we're obliged to follow those policies and those restrictions. So if you legitimately fall into more than one of these org type and org subtype categories, I would go through this quiz a couple of times and see which one yields the best results frankly because I worked for an organization that did youth leadership development and it also did advocacy. When I went through the process two different times, I got shockingly different results. So if you are already registered and you think you should be eligible for some donations but you find that you are locked out of them, you may want to go through this quiz again and see if it changes if you picked other categories that are legitimately the work that you do. And you can call our, con our customer service, client services department, or email them, and they can review it with you, and they could change that for you if you are already registered. So I'm going to go ahead and put in an imaginary budget of $500,000. And your budget also determines what kind of eligibility you have. Uh, some donation programs say we'll donate to organizations with a budget of less than $50,000, or less than a million, or less than $10 million. Um, so keep in mind that those answers help determine your eligibility. And a rough-ish number is okay to put in there. And so after taking this quiz, I can now see all of these different programs that my organization is likely eligible to be able to request donations. So I can see, okay, I'm able to request Adobe and Adobe Creative Cloud and Autodesk and Bitdefender security software and computers from this one company, 
and Intuit that makes QuickBooks and Microsoft. So doing this quiz whether you are already registered in the system or not registered in the system is a great way to see all of the different types of programs that you can request. And so if I log in, which I'll do quickly, it logs me in. And now you'll see that it says my email address up top. It welcomes me and it says that I'm representing this organization, um, Youth of Tomorrow, my made up organization name for today. And if I do that eligibility check, it will show me all of those organizations or I'm sorry, all of those donation programs for which I'm eligible. You'll see I have a lot of organizations in here that I'm affiliated with that are test organizations. So I'll select Youth of Tomorrow, and now it shows me that list again. So it automatically knows which ones I'm eligible for once I'm registered. So this is a great way to double check that. So uh, other things in navigation, I pointed out this Get Products and Services left navbar just to show you where to check your eligibility and do that little quiz. Uh, there are some other important elements that you can find in here. If you know you want Microsoft donations, you can just go to the donor or provider page, which is just TechSoup.org slash Microsoft. Or you can click on it here. If you know that you are looking for Bitdefender and you want security software, or you want to go to Symantec and get the Norton Antivirus Security Suite, you can just click on the partner here and go directly to their sections where all of their different offers are available. If you are not sure what you are looking for, uh, somebody mentioned that they are looking for CRM. If you are looking for uh, donor and grants management tools like CRMs, there is a section where you can click on that. And I will just show you quickly. Where you can look at the different donor management options that are available in our, in our system. You can also check on these uh, drop-downs where you can see grants management, donor management, and CRM. And so you can select CRM from that drop-down, and it will show you all of the different offers that are available that fit into a CRM category, for example. In addition to that, you'll see over on the right side related articles, uh, you know, how to select the databases for managing com constituent relationship. You can look at the comparisons between donor management software that's available through TechSoup specifically. Um, you can look at blog posts, related webinars. So we have a lot of resources that are collected under these categories. So you can select again by category or solution. So if you are looking for fundraising software or donor management, or you are looking for computers and electronics like hardware, we will go through that in just a moment too, that this is one option to do that, is to go by category or solution. Now say you come to us in your specific type of organization, like you join us from a library. We have a section just for libraries. We have a section just for foundations where we have collected resources and articles and webinars and blog posts and products that are specifically available to that type of organization. Uh, we also have one for religious organizations. So if you are a church joining us, we have a whole section here just for you that talks about the different top products that are requested. So you can see that you are eligible for all of these different things down here at the bottom. And that shows different technology trainings all collected in one place. So navigationally we try and make it easy for you to find your way around these different options. So I'm going to go ahead and show software donations. Some people mentioned Microsoft. So I'll go up to Donor and Provider real quickly and show Microsoft. Now Microsoft is by far our biggest donor and most prolific in the quantity and types of products that they donate to the nonprofit sector. Uh, they are responsible for at least three of the B's in that $5 billion, probably four of the B's when it comes to donations to the nonprofit sector around the globe. Um, they are really very generous with donating their products uh, both in software like Microsoft Office or operating systems, um, but they are also generous with their newest uh, Office 365. So you can see some of the top products that are offered through Microsoft directly on this right side here. Now it's actually not Windows 8.1 anymore. If you land on this page, it's now Windows 10. 
So it has changed, but this page hasn't caught up yet because it's a pretty new offer. But you can see their server products, their SQL server products. Um, you can learn a lot about their different programs and how the donations are fulfilled. If you request Microsoft products, for the most part, you request them through TechSoup. We verify that you are in fact eligible. You get an email after that says, we've received your donation request. And then you get another email that says that has been approved. Here is where you go to get them. You will also get an email directly from Microsoft that says, come to our Volume Licensing Service Center, the VLSC. And that's where you actually download the programs that you want. And the Microsoft Donation Program includes not only these software programs, but they include Software Assurance which allows you as a nonprofit or library to upgrade those within two years of receiving that donation for no additional cost. You can also downgrade. So say you upgrade to Windows 10 operating system on a bunch of your machines in your office, and then you find out, ooh, this one program we use that's really mission critical is not compatible yet with Windows 10, and you need to downgrade to Windows 8 or Windows 7 or whatever it may be. You can also downgrade, uh, and you can upgrade for free. You can downgrade for free. You can select 64-bit or 32-bit. You can select um, Pro versus Standard versions if those are available. You can select multi-language packs. And that's no additional cost and happens directly in the Volume Licensing Service Center. So you can browse Microsoft products here. If you know that it's one of these top products, you can go to these landing pages. So for example, I'll go to the Microsoft Office page just to see the options that are there. And it shows me Standard, Professional Plus, and Office for Mac. Somebody asked about Mac-specific programs. We do have a lot of those available. Right now in our catalog, um, Office is Office 2013, and you can downgrade to Office 2010. Um, it doesn't have a date on it because that's something you select in the VLSC. Now coming very soon, we know that Office and Microsoft has 2016 version coming out. And you'll see already over here this related blog post that Office 2016 for Mac is already available. So if you're looking for that for Macs, it's out. You can get it now. You request this. Admin fee is $29 for that. That's per license. So if you have five computers in your office, and you want to upgrade them all, then you're looking at $29 for five times to do that. And then that comes with that software assurance. It also comes with a bunch of other benefits like extending it to your home laptop or um, e-learning programs that you can get directly through Microsoft. So a lot of these licenses come with additional benefits through the Volume Licensing Service Center that people pay uh, three or 400 bucks for per license in the for-profit retail sector if you want software assurance. It's pretty expensive. So it's a great additional perk that I like to highlight that they give you for free. Um, this admin fee is not going to Microsoft. This admin fee goes to TechSoup. And so TechSoup collects an admin fee on these donations because that's what helps us keep our doors open and run all of these programs and expand the offers that are available to you. And as a nonprofit, we get this is how we stay in business essentially as a nonprofit. So we're not actually making much money off of this, but Microsoft is wholly donating this. Some of the donations in our catalog, or some of the programs in our catalog are not donations. Some of them are discounts. So you'll see that it's a 50% discount or a 60% discount on the retail price or whatever it may be. And so that means that some of that admin fee is being paid directly to that company. So for example, I'll use FileMaker. FileMaker is a program in here where they discount. And so part of that admin fee is going to pay that other donor or, or discount company um, their fee. And then part of it stays with TechSoup. And in general, I think it's between 4 and 12% of the retail cost is what our admin fees are based on. And that's negotiated. We're always trying to negotiate those down to be lower admin fees. But uh, again, we really rely on those relationships with these corporate partners who want to do good work and want to have their products used by the 
social sector, and we can provide them access to a lot of social sector organizations. And so we can try to negotiate down, hey, we serve 600,000 organizations. We want to bring these organizations this product, but we want to do it at the lowest possible cost. So can we do this at a 5 or 6% admin fee or 4% admin fee? Sometimes they say, yeah. Sometimes they want it to be more than that. Sometimes they want it to be a discount. So every one of those programs is a conversation that's negotiated between our business development folks who are always out there trying to expand the different offers that we have and add more programs and products to our catalog, and the companies that are doing the donating. So keep that in mind. Um, so let's say I want to go ahead and jump in on Office Professional Plus. I can do this today, and I can go through the VLSC and get my Office 2013 if that's what I want. And then if Office 2016 comes out publicly in a month, or two months, or six months, or a year and 11 months from now, I decide I want to upgrade, I can do that for free with the Software Assurance. So I'm going to go ahead and say I need three licenses of this, and I want to add it to my cart. And I'm confirming here that yes, I'm requesting this for this organization. So for those of you who have multiple organizations that you request donations on behalf of, you always want to make sure that you're requesting for the right one. And so this one has a $40 admin fee because it's the Professional Plus license. And it has all of these different suites. So the standard I think doesn't have a couple of these, like it doesn't have access as a database. Um, I'm not sure which other ones are in here. But there are a few things. I think this is a suite of 10. The standard version only has 7 different programs. Let's say I need the 10. So I'm going to get the Professional Plus. I can read the description of what it includes. I can read the different requirements of my hardware and software in the System Requirements tab. I can double check the rules and eligibility to make sure that I'm eligible to receive this. If I have more than 50 computers that I'm upgrading at once, then I can only request up to 50. So there's a limit on how many I can get during a 2-year cycle. So Keep in mind that there are limitations on some of these. And so this is where you read about these limitations. This is where you read what types of organizations can receive them. Uh, this is the types that are ineligible. So if you find that you can't request something that you thought you should have been able to, this is a section where you can read and say, oh, hmm, all right, I'm a K-12 school. I guess I can't get it through TechSoup's donation program. And if you are joining us and you're from a school, like a public K-12 school or even a private K-12 school, uh, you may find that you have to go through Microsoft's Education Discount Program or Donation Program separately. So this is where you see all of these uh, you know, restrictions around eligibility. So if you find that you hit a roadblock or get flagged on something, this is where you can figure out why. But let's assume my eligibility quiz said I'm eligible for this. I'm going to go ahead and add these three to my cart. And I've already confirmed, of course, these are compatible with my hardware and my software. And I can see three items now in my cart, $120, that $40 per license on those three licenses. So that's one example of how to go through this process. We had some other folks that asked about uh, QuickBooks. Now QuickBooks is managed by a company, or it's owned by a company called Intuit. So I'll go to Intuit right here. And you can see, again, here are the different Intuit products. There's Premier One User License, Three User License, and for Mac. And QuickBooks is another one that typically comes out with a new edition every year. So uh, this is edition 2015. If you're impatiently waiting for 2016, it's typically released in the fall. So if you know you're going to want another one and you want the latest version a couple more months, and you may be able to access it here through TechSoup. Um, one user license means it can be installed on one computer and used by that one login on that one computer. If you have somebody in-house who records your bills and invoices and does credit card reconciliations, and then you've got an accountant that needs to access it just to do some work on a 990 or to do an audit once a year, and maybe you have a board member that likes to review, well then you want to get the three-user license. 
because that's what's going to give you the access for three different people to use that account at once. Uh, you can click through on any of these and see the restrictions. QuickBooks limits to one license per year. So if you've requested this or if you plan to request it and you think, oh, I'll get the one user license now and I'll come back in a couple of months and get another one, you've got to make sure you're checking the eligibility and restrictions because you can only do it once per year. So that's why it's important to read some of that fine print. And again, think of this like an in-kind donation or a grant where you are you know, following the rules. You've got to jump through a few hoops. It's not like going to Amazon and buying a product uh, and getting it two-day shipping at your door. Most of these are electronically downloaded. So like I'll click on the three user license since that's one of the most common requested. And I'm only getting one of these because again, in the rules and restrictions, it, is, uh, it says here, organizations may request one accounting product per fiscal year. So th and that fiscal year is based on QuickBooks' fix or Intuit's fiscal year, July 1st through June 30th. So as long as you haven't requested one in that time frame already, then you can request one. This is available to organizations with an operating budget of less than $10 million. So if your organizational budget is higher than that, then you can't access this discount. You would need to go to someplace like Amazon or Best Buy to purchase it or directly to Intuit. So again, this shows you all of the rules and restrictions on the back end, and it shows you the format that you receive it in, that this is a download. So you would get the license key emailed to you and link to where to download this and run it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add one of these to my cart as well. And it says it includes a nonprofit edition. The QuickBooks Premier Editions actually includes, I think, five or six different versions. So it includes just regular QuickBooks Premier. It includes a nonprofit specific edition. And it also includes like some business editions, uh, a construction contractor type edition. So it includes a bunch of different options that you can employ if you so choose. Um, See now, now you'll see in my cart it shows four items, and my total in my cart has gone up. So that's, this is really the process for selecting software. I'm going to show hardware real quickly, and then we'll take a pause for some questions. Um, so going back over to this drop-down where you can browse by specific sections, I'm going to go by category or solution to computers and electronics. This is where you'll find many of our hardware products available. And I'd recommend looking at this drop-down because you'll see that there are mobile devices like smartphones. There's uh, mobile service plans. There are – I'll scroll down here – there's tablets. There's hotspots for Internet service and that can serve you know, a certain number of devices, 10 devices, 5 devices, single devices. And that's always changing. There are refurbished desktops and laptops through our Refurbished Computer Initiative, RCI program. There's also refurbished monitors. But even in the RCI program, there are also new tablets and new hardware listed too. It's just we didn't have a, a separate section called out for that because the majority are factory refurbished. Um, there's network hardware like your switches and your firewalls, from mostly from Cisco which you'll see here, so some of that hardware you might need for your security or access points, things like that. All kinds of options back there. And you'll also see other office equipment listed. And other office equipment can be headsets, and these are high-end you know, Sennheiser Pro type headsets. You also have you know, mailing and uh, ranking systems. So if you need something and you're sending a lot of stuff out, this is where you can find things like that. We also have things like backpacks. So Dell donated a whole bunch of backpacks. For 38 bucks, you get three of them. And they're laptop uh, – really nice actually backpacks. I'm, I've been wanting to steal some out of the, the, the back warehouse, but we don't do that. So, um, and one that I want to highlight really quickly that's a new offer in our catalog is Journey Ed. Journey Ed has for many, many years been a really trusted source of donations and discounts for educational programs, so for public schools. This has been a resource for teachers for years and years and years. And just recently they have decided to expand their 
donations and discounts to nonprofits, which is super exciting, and public libraries. So what this $10 admin fee gets you is access to that full catalog. And I have it open. You can't actually go through the catalog because the link to the catalog, uh, you won't be able to see it on my screen when I show it, but the link to the catalog is actually the access to it. And so the $10 admin fee just gets you access to it. But I want to show off a few of the options that are available in Journey Ed's catalog. So you'll see at the top, in partnership with TechSoup Global, this little reference link has already changed itself. When you click on it, it doesn't go to the actual address. And that's automatically. I was kind of hoping it would show, but it doesn't. Um, and so you can see all of these different options that are available in here. And I wanted to highlight a couple of programs or different options that are available in this Journey Ed catalog because it's huge. And there are some really uh, popular programs. Now some of the programs, and it's not just software. It's software. It's hardware. It's AV equipment. It's accessories. It's electronics. It's educational packets and things that you'd use in your classroom like digital whiteboards uh, if you do school-based or daycare or after-school programs, all kinds of things in here. Um, but it also has some really popular software in here that isn't available in TechSoup's catalog. Highlighting quickly Corel Draw. So this is another graphic suite. And now not every one of these will be uh, a donation. A lot of them are discounts. And so as with any shopping that you may do for your organization, I always recommend still go out there and Google or Bing or do whatever you do to price compare because you may find that some of them you can get less expensive elsewhere. Some of them this will be a great deal comparatively. So if you're looking for things like Corel Draw, or if you're looking for Camtasia, which is uh, what we use here in-house at TechSoup to edit our videos, um, and it's great you know, for screencasting and video editing, you know, you'll find that these are much less expensive through this Journey Ed program. So these are some software programs that just highlighting quickly. I also wanted to show um, just the range of stuff for those of you who may need AV equipment like projectors or screens or microphones that under their AV equipment and music and video, just look at the different options here. You can get mixers and all kinds of – so if you run live events, or you have – for example, you're at a church and you need AV equipment for running your services or running your youth group, tons and tons of stuff in here from you know, microphones and mixers and speakers and monitors and cables and all kinds of stuff. But also for classroom environments, green screens and video cameras and all kinds of things. And these are things that are hardware that's new to TechSoup because it's coming to us through this program with Journey Ed. So that's just one thing. And I also wanted to highlight quickly educational tools that you know, there are software programs, but there's also all of these kits on all kinds of different uh, educational programs. So if you run a Boys and Girls Club or a YMCA, or you're doing anything uh, where you have young people that you want to be engaging, they have tons and tons of stuff in here um, that traditionally has only been available at these prices to educators, uh, to public school teachers. So this is all new to TechSoup's program. But in order to access this full catalog and do the price comparing and, and to see which ones actually make sense to you, um, you have to do that request through TechSoup for the, for the access to it for $10. But if you know that some of these things on this list or some of these categories are things that you really need, um, like they've got tablets and laptops and carts and all kinds of things, um, 10 bucks is probably worth it. Or if any of the products that I mentioned are things that are on your list to buy at some time soon, uh, it may be worth it to you. So I'm going to jump back over to TechSoup's site. And before I move on, Allie, did we have any questions that we should tackle now before we break? So uh, we'll do that, and then I'll show you more on the different training resources and webinars, and we'll answer more questions at the end as well. Hi, yeah. Um, we received a few questions about mainly relating to fiscal sponsorship and whether or not you are eligible as an organization with a fiscal sponsor. 
Um, and then more specifically, there was a question about um, as a ministry under a 501c3 foundation, are they eligible to register to become a member? Okay, so that first question about fiscal sponsorship. So if you look under our support tab here, we have this product donation FAQ. This is our frequently asked questions. And we talk a bit about this. So there are a couple of different things that work. And, and if you're fiscally sponsored by another organization uh, where you just fall under their umbrella and they manage your finances and whatnot, currently you can't register yourself separately from that organization. So for example, if you're a TIDES grantee and they are your fiscal sponsor, TIDES actually is the organization registering, and you have to get your stuff through them, for example. Um, we are in the process of negotiating that to change very soon, we hope, fingers crossed, that that will change with most of our donor partners to allow organizations that are doing great work that are fiscally sponsored by another C3 nonprofit that don't have their own EIN. Uh, we're working on changing that, but I don't know how soon that will happen. Now the one uh, example that's different from that is if you are an affiliate of like a United Way, Boys and Girls Club, YMCA, if you have a branch of libraries and you're part of that branch uh, or part of that library system for example, or you have a whole bunch of churches. So you're part of a – what's the word I'm looking for? A diocese or uh, – I don't know the other words for this. <laughs> but if you're part of a big chunk of organizations, you want to reach out to our client services team and ask about our affiliate programs. Because in that scenario where you may not have your own 501c3 EIN number, you may be able to register and have each of your branches or each of your chapters or each of your affiliate locations registered separately under our system. And we basically import you all as a big batch. So if you are part of any of those organizations I mentioned or any type of organization like that, you want to reach out and contact our client services team. And you can contact us with this support tab, contact us tab here. And you can find you know, the phone number to call our client services, that 800 number, option 2, or you can email us, customerservice at TechSoup.org. There's also info about affiliate accounts right here. You can contact us at accountmanagement at TechSoupGlobal.org. Reaching out to us and letting us know if you are one of those exceptions. And maybe it's you know, you've got five branches that are part of the same system, whatever that system is. Um, we can work with you to help make sure that each of those five branches are able to register separately and request donations separately. Um, so I hope that helps answer it. It is on a case-by-case -case basis. So you may come to us and they may say, you know what, we, with your fiscal sponsorship the way that it is, we can't actually register you separately, uh, or we need a little bit more of this, or we need something on letterhead from the IRS that recognizes you. Um, you may find that that's the case, but it's certainly worth the call or email to find out because we've been able to get big batches of organizations entered in so that they can each request donations for their individual needs, even if they're part of a collective or affiliate-based or chapter-based or diocese-based um, organizational structure. So keep that in mind. Um, was there another question that I missed in there? Yeah, there were a few questions related to product fulfillment, mainly how long does it take um, from placing an order to receiving the order, whether that is hardware or software. Gotcha. Thank you for that. Um, so I mentioned that we're, you shouldn't think of us like an Amazon because if you're just starting out and you're just registering, you can go ahead and register your organization. You can request donations today. But as part of the registration process, you have to submit uh, – you, know, you have to have your EIN, which most people have on their W-2s, your employer ID number if you're needing to look for that. But you also have to submit uh, – and this can be – emailed, scanned, faxed, what have you, um, that IRS tax determination letter. And that's what qualifies you. So we have to actually see that yes, you are in the IRS's database as a legitimate 501 nonprofit in the U.S. So that process can take a week or two. So you could request donations today. The actual payment for any of those donations won't be charged to your account or to your card 
until that qualification process is finished, which usually happens in a week or two. Um, and then you can download most of these products immediately. So I didn't go to my actual cart, but I'll do that now. And you can see the steps here outlined at the top that I can view what's in my cart. Right here I've got my 3 Office Professional Plus and my 1 QuickBooks 3 user license. I then go to a restrictions check, and that's where I would get flagged if it tells me, oh, oops, you've already requested this in this fiscal year, or oops, your organizational budget doesn't meet the requirements, or oops, you're not actually eligible. Then step three is agreements, where I have to just click that yes, I agree that I am receiving this. Some of our donor partners say you know, they'll have like a non-discrimination agreement that you have to check, uh, which is just the standard kind of thing that you see at the bottom of like work applications and housing forms. Um, you're checking that. Some of them will also say, because I'm a recipient of this donation, I may be contacted to provide a testimonial about how it helped my organization. But even if you have to check that, you're not actually under any real obligation to respond to those. But you may get a survey to say, hey, you've gotten Adobe products, or hey, you've received Intuit. Tell us what it's done for you. Um, so that might be in the agreement section. Shipping and delivery, uh, you'll see the options for delivery. If it's hardware, uh, hardware usually, most of it ships directly from the vendor. So for example, if you're requesting a switch from Cisco and uh, a router or something, that comes directly from Cisco. And once you have, one, if you're already in the system and your organization is already qualified, uh, that might be at your office within a few days couple days. I mean it's whatever their standard shipping is. Um, from our refurbished computer initiative, those ship directly from our factory refurbishers. So it's not having to be packed up here at TechSoup and mailed over to you. Uh, so again, it can come in a couple of days. If you're just starting the process though and you haven't registered your organization yet, expect that it's a couple of weeks before you get something uh, because we need to qualify that you're actually eligible we need to receive those documents. If you've started the process and you wonder, huh, why haven't I heard anything? It may be that your organization status is pending qualification, that you got an email that said, please submit this form, and it went to that info at whatever your org name is, address, and nobody's noticed it. <laughs> so make sure you're checking because your fulfillment emails all go to that organizational email. And they don't go to Becky at TechSoup they, or Jane at whatever. They'll go to admin ad or info ad or whatever it may be. So you want to make sure that that email address is one that's checked regularly and that multiple people in the office may be able to access, that if a staff person leaves that you're not losing that address because that's where your organizational fulfillment emails will go. So if you request Microsoft today, like this request right here, if I go to proceed through this process, it confirms to me what uh, Let's see. Yep, I see nothing flagged in my cart on the restrictions check. I'm going to proceed with my donation request. I'm going to select the agreements saying, yes, Microsoft will send me the licensing info to my organization email address registered with TechSoup. And it asks me to agree that I'm not discriminatory. And it asks me to agree for my QuickBooks Intuit donation that this is for charitable purposes and belongs to the organization. I'm not allowed to sell it or use it for personal gain, things like that. I mean these are pretty standard agreements with any donation or grant that you'd receive. I'm going to go ahead and proceed with my request. In this process with shipping, so both of these products are actually electronically delivered, right? So I know that they're coming to me and I need to download them. I'm not actually getting a box in the mail with my Intuit QuickBooks and my Microsoft uh, Office. It defaults to ground shipping because if there was any kind of physical product, uh, you know, so it says default to ground even though these are electronically delivered. But this is where I need to make sure my organizational email address is one that's still being used because this is where all of my instructions will be sent. Um, proceed with my donation request because all of that looks correct. And again, it shows me that email address again. And I can either choose to pay by credit card or by check. Now we don't actually process it until we receive the check if you have to do it that way. The quickest way is certainly to use a credit card. And it gives me the option to complete the billing info and the card information. 
And I'm not going to do that because I don't have a fake credit card to use, but this is where you'd select that info. And if I were to click to proceed, it would confirm, yes, we've received your order. And I would get a trigger email that says, we have received your donation request. Later on you'd get another one that says, these requests have been approved. And that may just come from TechSoup, but it may come from the donor partner directly. So you might be looking for an email from Microsoft or Intuit. It depends on the different donors, and we usually have those kinds of instructions in those details on the product page itself to let you know. You'll get two emails after you place this request, or you'll get one email that will have the instructions on how to fulfill your donation. If that's ever lost, or you need it resent, or you find out after the fact, ah, oh, gee, nobody has been looking at Webmaster at blah, blah, blah since 1996. So all of that stuff went to some cyber, you know, cyber abyss, and nobody's looking at it. How do I get it back? Well, that's when you contact our client services. They can resend any of those to you. They can update that email address. They can make sure that that's correct. Um, so I'm going to go back to TechSoup.org and jump out of that. And I'm actually going to go ahead and take us back to the slide deck since we're almost at time. And it looks like there are a couple of other questions in here. Um, Beverly is asking about QuickBooks. Can you put it on more than one computer? And how can I transfer current data over to the new QuickBooks? Um, again, with that license, if you get a one user license, you can only put it on one machine. If you have it on an existing machine and you want to use that data, you can do that, but I can't actually take the time to explain all of that to you today. Um, tech support for most of these products has to come directly from the vendor. So if you get a Microsoft product and you're not sure how to use it, our client services team, they're nonprofits and they're only working kind of nonprofit hours. Uh, they're not 24-7 like Amazon around the world. They're not typically going to be equipped to help you walk step by step through how to use QuickBooks. Uh, that's something that you want to go to the Internet, go to the knowledge base on Intuit to find out how to do that. Now we do run webinars and events on that. And if you go to – let's see if I have a slide here. Uh, just looking at our home page, if you go to the Community tab, you can click on the Events drop-down which won't show up since I'm not live screen sharing. And that's where you'll see all of our webinars. We do webinars on QuickBooks where we have a trained CPA who specializes in QuickBooks who walks through some of those processes. Um, you look at our upcoming calendar. Look at what has passed. We have a whole archive of a couple of hundred events in there that you can feel free to use. Under our Resources tab, you can access our knowledge base of articles, blog posts, how-tos, um, all kinds of things like that. And I didn't actually show NetSquared, their website, but you can search there to find the local meetups that I mentioned earlier and access the different, um, different in-person meetups where you can reach out and say, hey, does anybody know somebody who can help me with my QuickBooks? And that's a great place to uh, find those local connections to help support you in using any of these things too. We try to make it available through those resources on our site. But again, step-by-step -step expertise on every one of these programs for every one of these donor partners, it's just not possible for us to keep up and be a specialist in all of it. So I'd like to just point out quickly, and I'll share this uh, in the follow-up email, you can always ask questions in our community forums. If you log in, you can get into our TechSoup program help. You can ask questions about specific programs. Uh, you can also check the links around eligibility and restrictions, check on donation status or order history. If you've requested something previously and you don't have it yet, you may be able to go there and find out why. Maybe it's pending qualification and they need that IRS uh, determination letter faxed in or emailed in. Or maybe it was something that you weren't actually eligible for. Or maybe there's something else like payment didn't process right, or there was a typo in something. So that's where you can find out what any hangups might be. You can look at the list of organization types and subtypes, get to that product donation FAQ, and take the eligibility quiz pretty easily with those links. And they'll be in the slide deck and follow-up resources as well. Before we disconnect today, go ahead and chat in one thing that you learned that you found useful and that, would ha that you're going to go back and try and implement. Maybe it's that you're going to start your account. Maybe it's that you uh, will 
make a request that you haven't made, or maybe you'll go back and change your organizational email address because you realize it's out of date. Go ahead and let us know what you learned today. Uh, while you do that, I'll answer just another couple of questions. Floyd asked, uh, Microsoft 365, will I have to pay a fee annually? Office 365 is directly uh, done through Microsoft, and it is a perpetual license. Uh, some of the there's free options, and there's ones that are paid monthly uh, where you can select an option and pay a small fee like $250 per month per user for some premium add-ons. Um, but it is a perpetual license, so there is no annual fee technically. If you go with the free options, they are free forever as far as we know. I'd like to also invite you to join us for upcoming webinars. I realize we're a little bit over time here, but we have all kinds coming up. And you can see a sampling of what is here now uh, and on the calendar for the next month and a half. Tech planning tips for small libraries. We'll be doing some Adobe InDesign, taking you through the process of designing a postcard for a save the date or an invitation for your event. Um, next Thursday, same time, we'll be talking about Windows 10 for nonprofits and libraries and the different upgrade options. We'll be doing some tactical tips for Giving Tuesday and year-end fundraising in early September. And then for those of you who are interested in QuickBooks, we will be introducing QuickBooks Online. So if you are looking forward to that online version of QuickBooks, it is coming soon. We'll be talking about how to make your grant request sparkle, and navigating the world of donated and discounted technology beyond TechSoup's world even. So we invite you to join us for any of those. They are all free. And you can check out our webinar archives as well. Again, that's at TechSoup.org slash events dash webinars. Join us on TechSoup Global, TechSoup.org, our Facebook, and our Twitter. And lastly, I'd like to thank Allie for helping on the back end so thoroughly answering questions throughout the webinar. And lastly, thank you to ReadyTalk for providing the use of this platform. They are also one of our donor partners. So if you are interested in doing your own trainings or webinars like this, you can learn more about that donation program at TechSoup.org slash ReadyTalk. When you close out of this window, please take a moment to complete the post-event survey that pops up. Let us know how we did today so we can continue to improve this program. Thanks so much everyone, and have a terrific day. Bye-bye.